Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do extremely budget friendly makeup. So we're going to head to my local Dollar General Market. I live in a tiny town and the Dollar General is the biggest store here. Let's see what we can find in here to do full face makeup. Eyeshadow applicators for a dollar. Yes, please. After I get this home, I'm going to do a full face makeup with it and I'm going to tell you exactly what worked and what didn't. Now, I haven't been in the store for a while, but I noticed that there's this huge display of B Beauty Essentials. And what really sucked me in is that everything's like one or two dollars. And they had a large shade selection. That's their darkest concealer. I'm going to grab two of these, a lighter one and a darker one, so that I can use them hopefully for contouring. And while I'm excited about this, I'm also a little nervous because I know nothing about this brand. And they just keep sucking me in. Now I found $1 eyeshadows. I'm getting one of those and then I look over and I see this primer spray. Now I'm really intrigued. And let's not forget the foundation stick that I had to try even though I bought another foundation. Thank goodness they have the Maybelline Express Brow Pencil. And then we're going to grab this oldie but goodie Great Lash Mascara. I don't see any setting spray, but I did see this CoverGirl Clean Invisible Loose Powder. And I'm going to try this Nivea Nourishing Body Serum. And then we're on to skincare. This is my trusted dollar store brand, Believe Beauty. And I'm getting the Reviving Eye Cream with Caffeine and Ceramides. The Hydrating Gel Cream infused with Squalene and Rosehip. And the Daily Gel Cleanser that cleans your skin without stripping it. At this point, I feel like my husband's rushing me a little bit, so I'm just scurrying for last minute things like silicone blenders and brushes. I ended up finding some great finds and some real duds. And now I'm going to show you which is which. So let's start out with the daily cleansing gel. I recommend using this two times. Just wash your face, rinse it really well, and then do it a second time. It's completely safe because you're not going to strip your skin and it's just going to give you that beautiful, soft, smooth base to apply your makeup to. I'm going to remove any excess water with one of my clean face towels. And then while my skin is still damp, I'm going to apply my eye cream. This is a very light feeling cream. It hydrates and replenishes the under eye area with caffeine and ceramides. And I'm going to follow that up with the hydrating gel cream. This is really lightweight, but when it goes on, it feels very rich and nice. I've used Believe Beauty products before, but I've never used their skincare. I actually really liked this. And all three together only cost $15. I think for another five, it would be worth adding the vitamin C serum. Now let's get ready for makeup. I'm really excited about this prep and prime spray because I sprayed it on my hand last night and it really looked amazing. And it was just tacky enough to make that makeup stick to it really well. And I love that when I looked at the ingredients, it's got a couple of really yummy things for the skin in there like glycerin and aloe leaf. Moving right along. I've never used this before, but I've got dry skin. And let me tell you, this stuff is amazing. And it was only like $5. Now we're coming up on some dud products, but this Maybelline concealer was definitely not disappointing. I can't remember the last time I used Maybelline concealer, but I was really impressed with this. It blended like a dream. And then once I had it under my eyes, it looked amazing. Now I did wait a few minutes and it did finally start to crease up, but a little bit of setting powder solved that and it looked great all day. Remember when I said I got two foundations? Well, this is the BB cream. BB stands for beauty balm, which means that it normally has some kind of skincare in it. But then on the package, it says when you need just a little bit of coverage, blend on this slightly tinted BB cream for the perfect finishing touch. And that made a lot of sense because this went on really, really lightly and it did feel like a tinted moisturizer to me. Now it's darker than my skin, so it's going on and looking gorgeous. I'm loving that addition of color because I need more color in my face. I didn't get as much coverage as I needed on my nose, but I did tap in a little extra to make it work. All in all, for a dollar, I liked it. I'm going to go ahead and grab the eyeshadow brush from the set because I've noticed that the Maybelline concealer is creasing up a little bit. But before I put any of that setting powder on, I'm going to go ahead and use those other two concealers. These are the dollar ones by B Beauty. I wanted to do a little highlighting with this and I thought, well, I need something to blend it out. 
so I grabbed one of those silicone makeup blenders. I've been mildly curious about these. They seem pretty flexible, a little squishy. The instructions say to blend using circular motions. It feels so unnatural, almost like I took my flip-flop off and just rubbed it on my face to see if I could blend my makeup with it. Honestly, any $1 beauty blender would have done an amazing job and this was awful. I should have done stuck with my fingers. $3 wasted. I was thinking about using this to contour with and then just decided last minute to use it as a bronzer. And I'm just putting it on my hand and then going to use that eyeshadow brush so that I can just apply a little bit softly at a time. And then I'll use my fingers to blend. I'm using the darkest color available. It's called Rich and it's $2. It was really blendable and lightweight feeling. I'm really kind of taken back by how good it feels and how easy it is to blend. So I'm gonna do something unheard of and I'm gonna use this as eyeshadow. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is that I just looked over and saw that the eyeshadow palette that I bought for a dollar are all shimmer colors. So there's no way that I can wear shimmers up high where I need to actually create a contour on my eye. My eyelids are really very wrinkled and crepey. Wearing most shimmers is just going to accentuate all those little wrinkles. So I'm really hoping that the concealer will do the trick. While I'm waiting to see if that's going to crease up, I grab my blush stick that I bought for a dollar. And normally I like to add my blush on the top of the apple of my cheek, because I feel like if I add it to the apple of the cheek, then when I stop smiling, that apple is gonna drop and then it's gonna drag my face down. The B Radiant blush stick did not wow. It just didn't have enough pigment to do much. And since I forgot to buy a lipstick, I'm just gonna try it on my lips. We'll come back to lips in a minute, but first we've gotta set all this in place. This is the CoverGirl Clean Invisible Loose Powder number 105 in Translucent Fair. It was $6.75. I'm not seeing any creasing on my eyelids, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a very tiny amount of that setting powder and go ahead and set it in place just to make sure it doesn't scoot around. And while I did sort of form a little bond with that eyeshadow brush, it did have a couple of hairs that just needed to be plucked out of it. And I have a question for you. Are you more team CoverGirl or more team Maybelline? I have always been a drugstore makeup girl, but I don't think I've ever tried this CoverGirl translucent powder. And it's giving me this beautiful kind of soft matte look. And I've used just the tiniest amount under my eyes to set that makeup in place. And it looks really good, even in my 10X mirror. Let's see if I'll be as lucky with this eyeshadow. I'm gonna keep it simple and just use two colors because I've already got a base color on my eyes. So the dark brown is basically gonna go on the outer half of my lid. I'm gonna quickly pat it around in place. I'll grab that lighter color that's right next to it. Remember, these are all shimmery colors. Now let's use that $1 dual tipped cotton eyeshadow applicator and see if it actually does a good job. It's kind of flat and fat on one side and then pointed on the other side. I really did not like this for blending my eyeshadow, but I do think these are a nice thing to have in my arsenal for cleanup around my eyes. Here's a little trick that's perfect for those of you who can't wear eyeliner under your eyes. You know what's made for under your eyes? Concealer. And that's why I'm using this dark brown concealer as an eyeliner under my eyes. Now to do this, you wanna make sure that your wand is not saturated and you want to just drag a fine line under your eyes. Then use a small eyeshadow brush to blend and soften it. This lasted me all day and it looked stunning. Now I'm looking at my eyes and I realize that the color is not up high enough. So I'm going to use a little bit of that concealer and just bring the color up. When you have a hooded eye, you've got to bring it up high enough to where it actually frames your eyes when you're resting your face and looking straight forward ahead. If you don't, it just makes the hooded part look all that more hooded. Now that that's more balanced, we can go ahead and adjust this lipstick. I'm just adding some of that brown pigment from the eyeshadow, and then I'm gonna blend. Then I'll add a little bit of the golden color over. It's basically the same colors that are on my eyes. And then my $1 LA Colors Sparkle Lip Gloss Over. These two eyebrow pencils by Maybelline are named the same thing and they're the exact same color. So here's the difference. One is a crayon and the other is a twist up kind of micro pencil. The pencil is not nearly as good as the twist up and I just wasted $5.25 on it. 
So I'm going to use the one that I had, which is a Maybelline Express Brow Ultra Slim Pencil in 255 Soft Brown. This is probably my favorite drugstore pencil at this point. Some pencils are better for filling in sparse areas and other pencils are better for just kind of reconstructing a brow like I like to do. But I feel like this pencil is good for both. Not everybody needs an eyebrow pencil though. And if you've just got nice brows, but maybe they're gray and you want to give them a little bit of color so that they'll show up on your face a little bit better, then opting for a brow gel or sometimes they're called brow mascaras will be perfect for you. Just make sure that it's not a clear one. They normally come in like a blonde, a taupe, a dark brown. And if you're all silver or gray, you just kind of want to experiment a little bit. You want to try for a shade that's a little bit lighter than your natural hair color was before you turn silver or gray. And I really love to underline my brows with just a little bit of concealer. Even if you don't do anything to your brows, if you just have nice brows, if you underline them with just a little bit of concealer, you can actually control the shape with the concealer. And it just kind of gives you that nice, bright, open eye look. By the way, if you've gotten any value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. This lets YouTube know that you found the video to be valuable and somebody else might find it valuable too. I'll put a list of all the products that I used in the description. And if I can link any of this to Amazon, say, or onto the YouTube affiliate program, I will include those links as well. Wondering how you'll know the difference? The YouTube affiliate links will actually pop up on screen and if there are any products tagged, you should see them now. However, the Amazon links will be in the description and the top pinned comment. Let's try out these $3.35 Kiss False Lashes. Do you remember that old movie Freaky Friday where the girl and the mother switched places? It's the one where Jodie Foster played the daughter. Do you remember the scene where the mother, after the daughter was in her body, was trying to put on the false lashes? She kept getting them stuck at weird angles. It was really funny. Anyway, that was me the first couple of times that I put on lashes. So if you're struggling with your false lashes, let me know. I've got some videos that will help you. I've got about 600 videos now on YouTube, so if you just want to be entertained for hours, you can pretty much hit the Makeup Over 50 playlist, and it will include almost everything I've ever done. And playlists are easy to find. You can find them on my main YouTube page. When in doubt, always click on my face. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun coming up with this idea. Make sure to leave me a comment and let me know where you're watching from. I have an amazing new facelifting device that I'm really excited to share with you coming up next month. Thanks for watching my video and I hope to see you soon.